Welcome to the All of Christ for All of Life podcast, where we equip men and women to be faithful in every aspect of life. This week, you will hear a few sections of Lindsay Tollefson's Psalms for Trials, read by Christine Dillon. Introduction Many of the Psalms contain a combination of prayers, praises, and passages of preaching the truth. In this section, we will be focusing on portions of the Psalms that are prayers. I encourage you to start using quotes from the Psalms as you pray. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul's exhortation to pray without ceasing can seem a little overwhelming. Praying without ceasing seems impossible. Obviously, we can't pray out loud every second of every day. We have to interact verbally with other people. But can we pray in our hearts all day, every day, and in any waking hours of the night? The Psalms are a perfect guide for us in this. We should pray with our own words to God, but I have found that my words often run out. I hear of a friend who has been diagnosed with cancer, and I pray, Lord, give her the strength to withstand the treatment. Give her the courage not to be afraid as she spends many days in the hospital and many days at home in pain. I ask that the side effects of her treatment would be minimal and that you would heal her and bring her back to full health. These are good words, but repeating them constantly without ceasing eventually starts to feel desperate. But if I follow these words with Psalm 103, 2, and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Then two things are happening. First, I am reminding God that he is the one who heals diseases. I am showing that I believe he is who he says he is, and that he can heal bodies. Second, instead of lifting up my friend in prayer over and over again, and constantly waiting impatiently for an answer, I am praying the answer. God says yes. He is the one who heals all diseases. He will heal her. Sometimes his healing comes by bringing his people to himself, and sometimes he gives our earthly bodies more years. But either way, the psalm gives me the answer to my prayer as I am praying it. While I continue to plead with God for her comfort and strength and earthly healing, I can continue to pray without ceasing, because the promises in the psalms have given my prayer hope. The psalms encourage us to tell God what we are feeling. David was a man of great courage and faith, and he had no lack of emotions. Though God knew what David was feeling, he wanted David to pour out his heart. In Psalm 6-6, he says, All night I made my bed swim. I drench my couch with tears. This might seem slightly melodramatic to modern evangelicals, but David knew the context in which he should pour himself out. He knew when it was time to grab his sling and run unarmored into battle with a giant, and he knew when it was time to express his emotions in prayer. When life seems so overwhelming, we may not even be sure where to begin our prayers. Sometimes God gives us a disappointing answer, and then what do we say to him? This is where David's words can meet us and give us great comfort. As we learn psalms, we learn what words to use in our own situations. Maybe you are dealing with a physical illness, or trying to raise a difficult child, or muddling your way through a tough marriage. Maybe you have been pinching pennies for what feels like forever, or you have been praying for an open womb. Maybe you just have a hard job, and the basic stress of making it through your daily work leaves you feeling exhausted, physically and spiritually. This is why you must learn psalms. They will give you the words to help you pour out your heart to God, and they will give you the hope that He hears and that He cares. Praying Through a Trial It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. 
Psalm 119.71 Unless your law has been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. Psalm 119.92 You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word that I may live, and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be safe, and I shall observe your statutes continually. Psalms 119, 114-117 Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Psalm 119, 153 Psalm 119 is famously the longest psalm of the Bible, with 176 verses. It is a meditation on the excellence of God's laws. The psalmist keeps coming back to this theme. Affliction teaches us that there is no sweeter thing than to study and to meditate on than God's law. When we are struggling with affliction, we may quickly be tempted to look to human means for help first. Though seeking the help of a doctor or counselor may be wise, we will totally miss the point of the trial if we are not viewing it as a gift from the hand of God and part of His purpose and plan for us. We can learn so much from Psalm 119 about the blessing of trials. The first thing the psalmist does is express gratitude. He says that it was good for him to be afflicted because it brought him to Scripture, verse 71. His hardship brought him to seek after God's law, to cry out to God, to look to God for answers about how to live and how to think. When we see our trials as discipline that is testing us and ultimately refining us, we can see the good that God is doing in them. When we view hardships this way, they change us. Give thanks for this change. Second, the psalmist says that he would have perished in his affliction if he did not delight in God's law, verse 92. His soul would have been consumed with fear, discontent, and anxiety. He found that the only defense was to study the word of God. Scripture is like the vitamin C for our soul immune systems. Being in the word creates a strong defense against enemies. When life gets busy and fast, it is harder for us to find time to be in the Word. But what does the psalmist say? You will die without it. I am well acquainted with the difficulty of keeping a consistent Bible reading routine through normal life changes, but I encourage you to find a time each day when you can feed your soul no matter how short of a time it is. Whenever our family has faced a big change, It has been hard to keep up with reading my Bible. When we have moved, or had a baby, or even transitioned from the school year to the summer months, my routine is changed and my well-established habits suffer. I have had to learn to make it the most important thing I do in a day. On average, reading one chapter of the Bible takes less than five minutes. Spend five minutes to nourish your soul, and you will find that your soul is thirsty for more. The third thing that the psalmist does in his trial is to ask God to uphold him. He calls God his hiding place and his shield, verse 114. Later, he asks for deliverance, but here he asks for protection. The psalmist needed physical protection while he was still in the trial. I ask God often to protect me from bitterness, resentment, anger, impatience, and pride. He can be our hiding place from sin in the same way that he was a physical hiding place for the psalmist. When we are in him, surrounded by the defense of his law, we are safe. In verse 153, we see the psalmist's fourth step in dealing with his affliction. He asks God to consider him. He argues that he has kept God's law and delighted in God, and now he wants God to notice. He wants God to respond and deliver him. 
This reminds me of when my children are unhappy with a decision we have made. We tell them to eat their dinner, and after a few bites they ask, how many more? They are asking us to remember them, to consider the obedience they have shown, and to revoke the decision. They want to be done with the affliction of eating salad. The psalmist believes that God is the kind of father who responds to appeal. Even before God became man and lived in the sinful world, the psalmist knew that God was merciful and understanding. How much more can we pray for God to consider us? Christ has become man. He knows exactly what we are experiencing. When you are facing hardship, use Psalm 119 as a guide for how to walk through it. First, give thanks. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Second, read the word. Third, pray for God to be your hiding place and your protection. Fourth, pray for deliverance. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Praying when trials are long. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me in the day that I call. Answer me speedily. Psalm 102, 1 through 2. In the beginning of Psalm 102, the author is desperate. He has been suffering for a while, and he needs deliverance now. He asks the Lord to hurry up. For the rest of the psalm, he pours his heart out to God, telling him exactly how painful and hard his life has been. By the end of his prayer, he has found peace. He has found God to be his rock, and he has found the strength to continue praising God, even in the middle of hardship, while waiting earnestly for God to deliver him. In this psalm, we are given additional words to pray as we ask for deliverance, and we are led to see the peace that comes when we draw near God in a trial. When a hardship drags on for a long time, we can easily grow weary and impatient. We want God to fix it immediately. We want answers, resolution, clarity we start to feel desperate for deliverance. This kind of desperation or impatience will drive us somewhere. We may start googling for advice or asking friends. We will most likely start complaining and talking about our struggle more than we should. Or we try to suppress the pain by any distraction we can find that numbs how we feel. Drinking, smoking, overeating, watching too much TV, shopping, changing whatever we can in life. Impatience and trial takes away our ability to be content. I remember one particularly emotional day during my teenage years. I was crying and having trouble articulating why. To me, it seemed like everything was wrong with my life, and I didn't know where to start. My father, who was a writer and doctor of theology, calmly handed me a book about the theology of emotions called The Cry of the Soul by Dan Allender and Tremper Longman. The authors explain how to differentiate between emotions that are righteous and emotions that are destructive. But what stood out to me the most was their explanation of how God uses emotions to draw us to himself. Our righteous emotions should be viewed as a signal that we need to look to God. Often we try to suppress emotions with distractions instead of using them to build our relationship with the Lord. The emotion of desperation in the middle of a tough time is a red flag that we need to run to God. If impatience drives us somewhere, we should let it drive us to the Lord. When we are impatient to be done with our trial, we need to look at what the psalmist does. He prays. He tells God exactly what he is feeling. He searches for answers in God instead of in the world. When we are weary, this emotion is like an empty light on the dashboard. We need more fuel, 
and we need to find it in His Word. We can find our fuel by reading Scripture, making sure we have made regular reading part of our life. Maybe you have a quiet time set aside already each day. Can you fit in another one? Can you begin and end your day with time in the Word? Finding this time is not easy for many people, especially for busy parents who are always caring for another person. When I became a mother, I started listening to Bible audio while I washed dishes and folded laundry. I listened to it while I was doing puzzles or coloring with my little ones, simultaneously training them to be quiet. Where can you find a few minutes in the Word? Do you have a long commute when you could listen to the Bible? Can you squeeze in a chapter to read aloud at breakfast, lunch, or dinner? We are also fed by regular prayer, both alone and in groups. We are fed by attending church weekly. We are fed by seeking counsel when needed from friends or professionals. Even without leaving our homes, we can fuel up our souls by listening to sermons online or reading the best of the thousands of Christian books that have been written over the centuries. Learning about God is one of the most powerful ways to draw near to Him. Weariness is not a sin, but our response to it can be. Weariness is a signal telling us we need God, and we need to fill all the means of encouragement He has given us and to fill up on them. By the end of Psalm 102, the writer has found peace and comfort. He reminds himself that his life is fading, but that God will never fade. Why does this bring him so much comfort? God does not change. We get tired and weary, but he stays the same. He has been delivering his people for all of history. He has been protecting them and blessing them and guiding them. When trials are dragging on and you feel impatient, run towards the Lord by praying these words. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me in the day that I call. Answer me speedily. Feed yourself with his word so that you can rest in peace as you wait for his answer. Thanks for listening to this week's edition of the All of Christ for All of Life podcast. That was the opening sections of Lindsay Tollefson's Psalms for Trials. If you'd like to hear the rest of the book on audio, you can purchase it at audible.com or anywhere audiobooks are sold.